In this lesson, we're going to be looking at objective 3.10, solubility. So the objective states that we should be able to explain the relationship between the solubility of ionic and molecular compounds in aqueous and non-aqueous solvents and the intermolecular interactions between those particles. So when it comes to solubility, you need to have your intermolecular forces down because we need to be looking at what type of interactions are similar and what interactions are not similar because that's going to help us understand will this substance be able to dissolve and mix with one another or will it not be able to. So solubility is the amount of substance. So generally we're talking about that solute that will dissolve in a solvent. Now, this is mostly for cases with solutions, uh, but overall, we're going to be looking at comparing two different substances. That's generally what's going to be happening, whether that be that it is a solution, whether it be two liquids or two different substances. So we're going to be looking at uh, the polarity then that's leading to intermolecular forces. So little recap, we learned that like dissolves like. This is a great way to help memorize, but it's not a great justification. So like dissolves like is over three different things. If you have two polar substances, and again, we're assuming they're different, they will mix and they will dissolve with one another. If you have two nonpolar things, and again, they're two different nonpolar substances, they will mix and dissolve. So where this like dissolves like, the, where is the opposite of this not working? If you have something that's polar and something that's nonpolar, so opposite of one another, it does not mix, dissolve well at all, okay? So one little thing to just note, you saying like dissolves like as your justification on the test is not a valid justification. So is not a valid justification because they see that as that you're just straight up memorizing. What you need to say is that you need to mention polarity in IMFs because when we indicate the IMFs present. So let's say two molar things. So two polar things, let's say they have LDFs and dipole-dipole forces. They have similar interactions. Now, if you had polar and nonpolar, well, polar has LDFs and dipole-dipole forces, while nonpolar just has LDFs. Even though, yeah, they have the LDFs that they're similar, but the fact that your polar molecule has even stronger IMFs of dipole-dipole, they are not going to mix because they're not similar. So here we're looking at similar IMFs for things that dissolve and mix with one another. And that's all you have to say. With those two polar molecules, they will have similar interactions of dipole-dipole forces. So here, they're going to be able to dissolve with one another. That's all you have to say. All right, moving on, there are three factors that affect solubility. The first being temperature. The next one is surface area. And lastly, pressure. So temperature, solubility increases with temperature for solvents, and that's because we are increasing the temperature of those particles. The kinetic energy is moving a lot more, so there's going to be more chance, chances for interactions, and you actually improve those interactions in the sense of LDFs, okay? Surface area, the larger the particles, generally will be less soluble. So here, if I had a really big rock of this ionic solid, only the, only the outside of that big rock is going to be reacting. Now, if you took that big rock and you put it in a mortar and pestle and you grounded it to a powder, you now have increased surface area. So here it will actually make it 
more soluble if we get more fine powders or fine little pebbles. But if you just took a big rock and dropped it in water, it has to work the outside in to be able to dissolve and mix everything. Pressure. Um, with pressure, uh, for majority of solids and liquid solutes, pressure does not affect solubility, okay? But for gases, the solubility of a gas is directly proportional to the pressure of that gas. So here, um, increasing the pressure will end up um, increasing the solubility and vice versa. All right, so we're going to do this we do together. The first thing is we're going to identify the intermolecular forces present, and then we're going to decide when it comes to hexane and water, which one is going to dissolve the substance better. So NaCl is going to have ionic intermolecular forces, okay? Because remember, it's intra is its inter. Next, C3H8, I'm just seeing a hydrocarbon strictly Cs and Hs. So this will be LDS. Next, I see CO2, LDFs, because it's nonpolar. Again, those were both nonpolar. And then lastly, CH2O. Here, that carbon is bonded to two hydrogens and double bonded to the oxygen. It will be polar because not all of, not the, the carbon is not sharing all of its electrons equally to all three atoms, even though it's trigonal planar. So here, LDFs and dipole dipole forces. Now let's look at hexane and water. So hexane, just Cs and Hs. So this is nonpolar with LDFs. And then water is a polar molecule. And yes, it will be having hydrogen bonding as well. Okay, so let's go through this together. So here, when it comes to NaCl, since we said it's the extreme of polar, it will dissolve better. It will dissolve better with the water. Next, C3HF, we're looking for similar IMFs. So here, the hexane will be a better choice for the C3H8. Next, CO2, only as LDFs, so the hexane will be the better choice. And then lastly, CH2O, since it is polar, we want the polar molecule, which was water. All right, moving on. I have this problem for you to try, okay? So here, you actually are gonna be looking at methanol, and then you have four choices, A through D. You're going to see which option will be the better uh, option, the better substance that will dissolve with methanol, okay? My advice, you need to identify polarity, and you need to identify intermolecular forces in your response and then talk about why this will be the better choice and do not use light dissolves light but just talk about the similar interactions so yeah pause the video and try this out yourself all right so you can see under um, each of the molecules i wrote the uh, polarity for them and then the imfs so methanol was polar with ldfs ddfs and hydrogen bonding a, C, and D are all nonpolar with only LDFs, while B, ammonia, was our polar molecule with LDFs, DDFs, and H bonding. So in my response, I said, well, ammonia will be our most likely to dissolve in methanol because since ammonia is a polar molecule with these three IMFs, it has similar IMFs to the polar molecule methanol, which also has LDS, DDS, and hydrogen bonding. So having those similar IMFs makes substances dissolve and mix well with one another, unlike those nonpolar molecules. 